What will it take to resolve the current tertiary funding impasse? Why are tertiary students adamant that free higher education for all is possible? Why have universities welcomed the 8% fee increase recommended by Dr. Blade in Zimande? And is violence and damage to university property the best solution to the problem? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Paul Sedu. On Monday, Higher Education and Training Minister Dr. Blayton Zimande announced a 0% tuition fee increase for poorer students and the so-called missing middle for the 2017 academic year. He recommended that fee adjustments should not go above 8% at all of the country's public universities. Minister Nzimande indicated that more than 4.5 billion in the 2016-2017 financial year has been reprioritized to the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. A number of institutions, including WITS and the Northwest University, have erupted into violent protests, though, with students saying they will not accept anything other than free higher education for all. We are live, and therefore you can call us and air your views. The numbers to dial is 89 Our Twitter handle at question time. To for my guest today, Webs. Onde is the Director General at the Department of Higher Education and Training, Lindoguse Kulu, is a student leader at the University of Johannesburg. And joining us from our Mafi King, or Mahi King rather, studios, in, uh, is uh, Dikaho Pule, who is the SRC President of the Northwest University. But before we get into the discussion, let's get the latest uh, from our reporter, Maha Ketla Musaba, and um, joining us uh, from uh, VIRDS. Maha Ketla, welcome to Question Time. Just give us quickly uh, the latest developments, what's happening on the ground there. Uh, good evening, Paul. Indeed, uh, just a couple of minutes ago, uh, we saw some violent scenes uh, during this uh, mass fall protest. Uh, the scenes that we did not see uh, pretty much uh, last year. But of course, this is the time when, uh, of course, the students uh, went out of the University of Reds. Uh, they went onto the streets trying to uh, to garner more uh, support from the other students uh, on the opposite side. Uh, but of course, that's when we saw the police. Uh, uh, you know, intervening and trying to clear them of the roads because, of course, there were some traffic jams uh, uh, there. But then, coming back uh, to the university, uh, they were uh, commanded by the police to get back to the campus, but they did not do that. They just arrived at the gate, and, of course, uh, traffic being uh, redirected to the opposite direction. Now, that's when we saw police opening fire in terms of uh, sun grenades as well as rubber bullets. So at this point in time, of course, we also saw students uh, throwing stones at the uh, police and, of course, uh, police continuing doing uh, what perhaps they were uh, directed uh, to do uh, in terms of uh, firing those rubber bullets. Now, the situation at that is just a bit calm, but it's tense. Students are still uh, gathering. Of course, you could say that they are planning for more action. Well, mm. we don't know uh, how, what time they will uh, resume their protest. We will be monitoring the situation here. Uh, but of course, the situation, as I say, is tense. Uh, so we will just see what's going to happen. And but of course, this happened as the university announced the fact that uh, the acad academic activities here uh, will be uh, suspended um, uh, for the rest of the week. And of course, students on the other side saying it doesn't matter if the academic activities have been suspended; we will continue with the protest. And uh, before uh, the university uh, decides to resume academic activities here they should have declared free, free education uh, for their students. So okay. it just remains to be seen what's going to happen here. All right, Marketa, thank you very much for that update. And that's our reporter on the ground there at Vets University following the clashes that uh, happened earlier today where some of the students, in fact, were also injured. But let's uh, get back to the show today on Question Time. And indeed, we're talking hashtag Feast Must Fall. Just get in touch with us uh, on, our, uh, on that uh, hashtag. Our tweet handle at Question Time to fall. Let's hear what you have to say. But you can also dial in and uh, we'll be taking your calls. 
Gentlemen, let me welcome you to the show. Webs, um, it's been uh, tough times. Did you anticipate that the students were going to reject this, uh, the latest position that the department has come up uh, with? Let me put it this way, Mpo, and thank you for affording us this opportunity. Yeah. The policy framework of the country is looking at achieving social justice mm. for all South African citizens. Mm. And in achieving that, there are fundamental policies that have been put in place, which are looking at the question of equity and redress. Mm. Now, the deployment of resources, it's looking at empowering those who do not have, so that they are migrated out of poverty into a situation where they could be able to earn a decent life decent living for their families mm. and for their communities. Now, in respect to this, what we have done as a department in trying to make a determination as to whether, if we are indeed to ensure that students from working class and poor families are adequately assisted so that they can be afforded an opportunity to study, thereby working towards improving their livelihoods. What should we be doing? We've been engaging with Treasury in respect to the resources that are available, been engaging with States SA into yeah. making a determination as to whether, if we are looking at each and every household, what would be the best mechanism that would address the question of need in this country with reference to funding students who are there in the system in the interim whilst the commission is finalizing uh, its work which we hope would be available next year out of that then the minister requested the council on higher education to make a compelling research and come up with recommendations in respect to this question as to whether the question of fees, how it could be addressed in a manner that would not disadvantage uh, these categories that I've spoken about. So that pronouncement has been made having undertaken that thorough study and thereafter engaging on the recommendations. Okay. Which six in the first instance, to address the plight of all children or students from working class and poor families. Yes. But it doesn't end there. It also addresses the question of the lower middle strata of society, okay. which is your teachers, police, mm -hmm. uh, nurses, etc. Okay. You are rejecting government's offer. Yes, yes. Well, we think that uh, the minister is not being honest uh, with, with the current situation and the government is, communicated, is busy communicating a scattered and a parallel message. On the other hand, you have a, a commission established by the president of the country to look into feasibility of free education. Obviously, there was a no, zero fee increment last year. Now, we are not expecting in the interim until that, that uh, commission makes findings. We are not expecting a, a, a fee increment of any sort because mm. that commission is looking into entire problems of the education system, is looking into the feasibility of free education. So I think now the, by the department uh, increasing fees is now uh, reducing confidence even in that commission. They are preempting the work of the commission in advance. So we are saying that if we allow them to, 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 to raise fees, they say in, in one way or another, we will have a situation where we'll be told that free education is not feasible. Okay. Because they'll even use this as a case study. But the other thing here is that I don't think Baba is being honest. The challenges that we have in this country is because of the neoliberal uh, policies that are being imposed by the World Bank and the IMF. We are actually giving government a bargaining tool at the global level to say this is what the people want on the ground. 
were promised a free education pre-1994. We're not talking about something new. So okay. all those researches that are done is actually the waste of public money. It's, it's the waste of the money that must be actually used to be channeled uh, on higher education. Okay, let me just quickly go to the Northwest there. Uh, the president of the SRC uh, of uh, the Northwest University is uh, joining us um, uh, live from that, that other end in Mafiking, or Mahiking rather. Um, government has not said that the fees must increase. They are saying um, if at all there has to be an increment, it should not be more than 8%. You don't seem to even uh, be prepared to listen to that. Uh, President? Yes, thanks. thank you very much, ASA. You, you can take into consideration that you find a situation whereby the government increase they, they are proposed to us to say fees will be eight uh, percent increase universities can come and make a different uh, input we are told that universities are autonomous to the government we have consulted our students they've said we are also autonomous from the government from the institutions therefore our students so it fit to say let us gather in the main gate the government will meet us in, in, in the street. But it may fact that we can, the same minister came to us last year to say the fees do not more, be more than 6%. Our institution, Northwest University, proposed 9.8%. This year, the same minister come to us again, tell us about 8%. Tomorrow there is a meeting that will be sitting of Northwest University of which I, I'm going to attend. That particular meeting can say the fees will increase with 12% because of they are autonomous from the government. We said we are also autonomous from the government and to the institution because of we can't find ourselves in a situation whereby we take instructions from the government. We are not going to do that. And in an institution just like Mafiken campus, whereby uh, the student will say, uh, we are not. We don't want a, a eight percent increase for rich students. Who is rich? Who is poor? And then again, the government again this is going to give this thing in the hands of the uh, university management to say, as the university management, this thing is on your disposal. Come up with the criteria that will uh, that will discriminate between the rich and the poor. In Northwest University, we don't have rich students. All of us, we are poor. For the mere fact we are attending in that particular university, it means we are poor. If we are rich enough, we could went to the universities such as University of Cape Town and University of Fethelvastra Sarant and other universities around the globe. Because of we are poor, all of us, we are belonging to that particular university. Okay. That is, what, that is our input. Okay. We, we even said we are going to... Okay, so All right, just hold it there. I'll just allow me there to, to come in. We need to take a quick break. And uh, when we return, we'll be taking your calls on 89 What do you think? Yeah, I mean, what are your views? Do you think the students are unreasonable? Is government being unreasonable on the other hand? What should government do? This is question time. Do you need a funeral policy? Joy is found in the little things. Ke ho pidisa. Ho fepa le ho hudisa. Ukuba ibona ukuvela kwethuba lalokho ukungenzeka. And being there when one journey ends and another begins. And it's your funny kind of gigs. A kosbara era na na mor. Life is the gift of growing new memories each day. So that our loved ones can preserve them after we are no longer here. Life is a gift to us. Since 1918, AFBOB has comforted and supported South African families in their time of need. Protecting their loved ones' memories with respect and dignity. Plus, committed and trusted funeral representatives with more than 250 branches nationwide. There for you, every hour of every day. Avbo provides a complete funeral service solution for everyone. 
even if you're not an Apple policy holder. Make sure your family comes first. Always. Apple. We're here for you. If you would like Avbob to call you about a new policy, SMS family and your name to 41790. You see this, but you feel this. You see this, but this is what you feel. You don't see this, but it feels something like this. And this is what you drive. The Audi A4 110 kilowatt sport from only 599 per month and we'll cover almost 3 quarters of the deposit. We'll pay for the dream so you can drive the reality. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. My guest today, Kweps Konde, is the DG at the Department of Higher Education and Training. Lindobuse Kulu is the student leader at the University of Johannesburg. And from our Mahikeng studio, Dikaho Pule is the SRC president at the Northwest University. But on the line, we've got uh, Nathan Swollendam in um, the Western Cape. Nathan, welcome. Hi, I'm Paul. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for the call, Nathan. Oh, man, it's a pleasure. Yes. You know, I, w I just want to say, Kotwa say that South Africa is not a welfare state. Mm -hmm. But what about the foreigners that, they, uh, that is by thousands that they support? What about Zuma's wife that the state must support? What about SAA that the money just disappeared? I think the students is right. There is enough money. Take all the ministers' money and give them just 20,000 a month. Then there will be free education for our children. Okay, Nathan, thank you very much. Well, I guess you've had all sorts of uh, proposals, you know, yeah. where is the money going to come from and all that. Is there money to fund a no-fee quality education in South Africa? Uh, let, let's put it this way. I think... Among students, they are economic scholars. Yes. And everybody has been following that. Uh, the economy has been growing at a very low rate. Yeah. If it's 1%, it's quite a lot. Mm. Now, for a country to be able to afford its needs, it's determined by the growth of the economy. Mm -hmm. It is quite important that we should not be looking at peripheral issues when we are addressing these questions that are confronting the nation at the present moment. Correct. So that we are able to make a determination of priorities and what those priorities seek to address. Firstly, it is not correct to say fees didn't increase last year for 2016. Mm -hmm. Fees did increase. But that portion of fee increase was absorbed by government for everybody, for every student. Government, that is yourself, because this is taxpayers' money, it's public money. You took monies that were supposed to benefit the poor and you give it to the children of the rich, if I may make an example. In the manner in which we paid this money is last year. We paid fee increment portion for the chil children of Rupert. Is it what South Africa wants to see? Mm -hmm. And if you look at it in the context of struggles that have ever been waged worldwide, I have never seen any struggle that has sought to advance the interests of the bourgeoisie all forms of structures that I know always sought to adv advance the interests of the working class and the poor. The, the student now, is raising his hand, if uh, you, Gwebs. I, I need to attend to him. But firstly, let's take Tekiso. Tekiso, you are in Centurion, quickly. Yes, my brother, how are you? I'm well. Thanks for the call, Tekiso. Uh, good to hear your voice, Grandpa. Uh, DJ, how are you? I'm fine, and you, sir? I'm good. Uh, DJ, I do believe that... Uh, Part of our challenges is that we don't have a proactive government which is able to address 
the problems while before they can even emerge. You see, the challenge that, that happened last year, wherever the head of state agreed to bow down to the needs of the students, which led to a situation whereby a blanket approach was utilized on the process of the to cover the Christmas fall in the previous financial period. It is then show, uh, show that we are having a government which cannot plan. It is always reaction, reacting towards whatever situation that comes in the end. And my second issue that I want to raise again, I think uh, equally though that we understand the outcries of our students, but also what we cannot support as much as they are getting our sympathy from the corporate, but we really can accept a situation whereby students have to go and vandalize property. Okay. And then the other issue that we are starting to realize that is that there is a third force behind the students now. Because of now, seemingly, and every time they are approaching exams, they are starting to hell down on this process, processes that we see now. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Brother. Thank you very much. Let me uh, quickly, let's take a quick break and we'll return and wrap up the show. see this, but you feel this. You see this, but this is what you feel. You don't see this, but it feels something like this. And this is what you drive. The Audi A4 110 kilowatt sport from only 5999 per month and we'll cover almost three quarters of the deposit. We'll pay for the dream so you can drive the reality. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. We have to wrap up the show. Indeed, we've run out of time. Let me quickly, you were raising your hand yes, before no, we went. Well, one, one needed to clarify some certain misconceptions. One, quickly, yes. One, it is not true that we're advancing the interest of the bourgeoisie. Mm -hmm. We are asking for free quality education, mm -hmm. of which we believe is a basic right, and we are fighting against the commodification of, 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 of education. Education cannot be sold. It's not a, it's not a commodity. commodity. But also, also, we want to clarify this. If we say we want free education, we also understand that the private sector must play a certain role. We believe they are protecting okay. private sector. Private sector is a main beneficiary of higher education in terms of police output, but private sector pays less than even one percent. Why are you not targeting it? Then? We, we, we are still dealing with our fathers, but okay. they must open a gate because what, what is happening actually here is that our fathers have been turned to, to be gatekeepers and to be bodyguard of these people who want to fight. They are preventing us from fighting them because you know they are not even telling us the truth that hey, our kids, no, we want to assist you because of Cortesa, we don't have money. Man is there in JSE. They, they are not advising us. They, they are ill advising us. They are misleading okay. society. They should be able to tell us and we, they should be able to start, protest with us because they are also being used by this system. They okay. are also fighting. You know, we have a situation where police are shooting at kids, but police themselves cannot afford kids, fees for their, for, for their children. So the system will use you against uh, your, your own interests. Let me just uh, go to the Northwest uh, so that we can uh, wrap up. Uh, uh, Rapul, um, what is going to happen? It doesn't yes, seem like uh, there's going to be any changes uh, now. What are you prepared to do uh, from now going forward? Yes, the most important thing is that when you research about the free education, you must consult those people who are concerned so that they can give you their stance and recommendation. It can't be that you, you can research about the free education then you don't consult the students themselves. They could have came to us, we could have told them, if we want to experience free education in South Africa, we have to cut mayor's salary, we have to cut minister's salary, we have to reshuffle and we have to reduce the number of the cabinet, fund free education, that we have to introduce a political will that will take a money direct from the private sectors through the revenues. We okay. fund free education. That okay. is what we have Correct. to do. All right. Grubs, we have run out of time. I'm giving you 10 seconds. Thank you. 
I think we must understand that uh, government has opened an opportunity for everybody to make representation to the commission okay. as to what they actually want. Secondly, I think it's important for our students to realize that for qualifications you get out of the system, the first beneficiary is yourself as a student. You are doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Then secondarily, you will be able to contribute in the economy. To have a thinking that we are doing it for somebody else out there either than yourself. I think it's a misconception that we need I to appeal that to, is our, incorrect. to our I believe, I believe that is incorrect. Okay. The next thing will be told that we must pay police to arrest oh. criminals. Okay. That is what will happen. Okay. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Mm -hmm. um, so let me thank you for the time, though. But that was uh, question time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show. From me and the crew, you have yourself a wonderful time. Have a hot. Thank you.